Welcome to day one of building 30 data science projects in 30 days. I'm so glad you're here. If you don't know who I am, my name is Avery Smith and I'm a data scientist. And over the next 30 days, I'm going to be doing something that no other data scientist has ever done before. And that is building 30 data science projects in 30 days. For day one, I actually got challenged by one of my favorite data companies, Plotly. And if you didn't know, I'm a data science consultant. And so for a lot of my consulting jobs, I actually use Plotly's and Plotly's products quite a bit. So it's near and dear to my heart. So I reached out to Adam Schroeder, who is actually the community manager at Plotly, and we had a conversation. I sent him a message explaining what I was doing and asked if he had a challenge for me. And a challenge he gave me, he asked me to create a multi-page Dash application with animal shelter data. Adam sent me a link to the data via Kaggle. And by the way, you can get access to all of the data, all of the code files that I do by clicking the description link down below that gets you access to all of the resources. With that, I was ready to create the thumbnail and the title for the video. And with that, I'm ready to start the project. So I'll go ahead and click start on my project timer and give myself around eight to 10 hours to complete this project. Hopefully I'll do it faster. As a reminder, here are the challenge rules. I only have 24 hours for each project. That's why I started a timer. I have to have a special guest today. Special guest is Adam. Each project must be posted by noon the next day on YouTube. And of course, I have to share the project in files with you guys, as well as for every thousand subscribers I gain, I have to do an additional day. That's a new rule. I just added that. So go ahead and press that subscribe button if you want me to do more than 30 projects. I'm a little nervous how big this can be, but hey, prove me wrong, shove it in my face, make me do more projects. So here's the data set in Kaggle. It is the Austin Animal Center Shelter Intakes and Outcomes. We can scroll down to the CSV. I did the um, full intakes and outcomes. This has both animals coming in and animals leaving. In Kaggle, we can select all of the columns, hit apply, and that'll show us all 41 columns inside of Kaggle, which I really enjoy. So here are the different columns. So we have the age upon outcome, which basically means the animal got adopted or died or something like that, date of birth, uh, we have the uh, outcome type, which you see a 42% was adoptions, 30% was transfers. Some of these are return to owner. The sex upon outcome, age upon outcome in years and in days. The looks like a range as well. The date, the month, the year, the weekday, the hour, the outcome number the date of birth of the year, the date of birth of the month, the date of birth of the month year. So lots of different columns you can see right here. And you can go ahead and click on the resources and get access to this link and you can see all of these. We also have the intake stuff, like for instance, was it a stray? Was it a public assist? Was it a normal? Was it injured? Was it aged? Where was it at? What part of Austin? What color is it? What breed is it? Um, whether it's a cat, whether it's a dog, whether it was left on a Monday at 6 p.m., all that good stuff. We have all these different columns available to us inside of this CSV. And so with this project, we know we want to use Dash, which is basically you can create a dashboard as a web application um, with Python and have a bunch of cool stuff in it. We want to ask some important questions of this data set, some things that might be useful for this animal shelter to know. If they were a business, if they're an organization, what would they want to know? How could their data help them make better decisions with these animals to have better outcomes? So I sat down and tried to come up with as many interesting business questions as I possibly could based off of the columns that I have in the data set. So something I was interested in is what was the average time that an animal spent in the shelter? And how does that differ by the animal type, the cat, dog? How does that differ by the age? What day of the week is the shelter the most busy? What month has the most intakes or the outtakes? Um, how old are the animals when they're donated, right? You think probably maybe older animals are donated more often. Um, how are the intakes happening? Like what are the different categories of, you know, donated or found, stray, stuff like that. Maybe color plays a role. <laughs> maybe people just like, you know, red cats more. Uh, does the breed play a role? Um, my wife and I have a golden doodle. We love golden doodles. If we ever get another dog, we would love to adopt a, a golden doodle. Um, are there more dogs or more cats? Do dogs get adopted faster than cats? How many animals are donated each day? So these are just some of the questions I just you know wrote down and straight bullets pointed. I didn't have the chance to answer all of them. Um, these green check marks were kind of the ones that I ended up answering. But that's like one of the first steps in a project that I talk about inside of my course is like list a bunch of interesting business questions that you potentially would think would, would be interesting to know the answer to. 
And so that's what I did here is just list down as many questions as I possibly could. Before I actually get into my analysis and what I ended up making, I wanna explain what Dash actually is. So Plotly is a company that makes an open source graphing library called Plotly, hence the name Plotly. And these are some of the cool graphs that you can make, scatter plot, line plot, bar charts, histograms, disk plots, all these different scientific charts. You can make ternary plots, log plots, contour plots. There's so many cool things that you can make with Plotly. And I'll go ahead and show you what makes Plotly really cool is if, for instance, if we go to the scatter plots, these are interactive and easily done with Python. So you can see that this scatter plot is done with just really just three lines of code. And you can do so many cool things. Like for instance, this one has differing very uh, styles and then it has these hover tips. So these are interactive graphs where if I you know scroll over them, I get to see different things, which is really cool. So these are really easy to make using Plotly. Now Plotly has another library in Python called Dash and Dash is short for dashboard basically. And Dash is a really easy way to make web applications or, or dashboards using Python. And so I'm here in the Dash gallery, which you guys can definitely check out. And there's so many cool things that you can do with this. So for instance, this is real-time object detection that is made in Dash. And this is all using Python. So what's really cool is you can like select certain things and you know do next frame previous frame like these are really these are much more than the power bi or tableau type of dashboards you can do all sorts of different machine learning in this case they're doing object detection um, you can click random frame you know find a frame containing a car or something like that and there you go there is apparently a car of sorts but i really love this you can go through these different libraries this is one of my favorite ones is the clinical ana analytics right here which is basically looking at hospitals and seeing how busy the emergency and cardiology rooms are it lets you choose these dates you know you could select different sources maybe click off some different things see how things change maybe we try uh, you know the whole month versus just the originals so i really love these web applications it's like a dashboard on steroids with the back end of Python, which lets you do so many more cool things. So that is what Dash is. Now recently Dash came out with a new feature called Pages, which basically allows you to create a Dash app that has multiple pages. So it's basically a full on website. So you can create an entire website, an entire web application just using Python and Dash, which is really awesome. This is a brand new feature that makes it so much easier to create these awesome data science tools that you can like produce and make awesome things with them. So that's what we're going to be testing out today. And so I got coding. I had these ideas and these questions that I wanted to explore, kind of looking at, you know, how much time an animal is spending in the shelter, you know, what type of animals spend there longer, what day of the week and what time and what day of the year is the shelter the most busy. And of course, I wanted like a homepage that kind of summarized the entire project and the entire operations of the animal shelter. So those are the main questions I had in the back of my mind while I was creating this Dash application. So I figured I'm going to have a homepage that's going to have the main ideas. I'll have a schedule calendar page that'll kind of cover the idea of the when stuff happens. And I'll have a third page that talks about how much time the animals spend in this shelter. So we'll have a three page dash application um, that will give a good start to you know a this animal shelter to actually know what's going on. Now before I show you the full end results, I just want to show you the actual code. So that really compiles of four actual scripts. The first one is the app that actually launches the app and, and tells the computer you know, how to deploy this app. And it is 40 lines of code. Then I have my home page, which ended up being around 150 lines of code. The calendar page, which ended up being around 115 lines of code. And then the time and shelter page, which ends up being around 50 lines of code. And overall, it took me about five hours to write all this code and make sure that I followed everything the way it was supposed to be. But it took me three hours to deploy it. And it was very hard to deploy it to Heroku. Um, that's what I ended up using to deploy this so that you could actually just type in a URL into any computer. So you can check this out. You can type in this URL and it would take you to that page. So you can see after eight hours, 10 minutes and eight seconds, I was able to finish this project. And I was ready to show Adam. All right, Adam, I have taken your challenge and I have completed it. Are you ready to see some of the results? I am ready. Let's see it. 
So I went to animal-shelter-averyhirokuapp.com, which all of you guys can go and check out right now, and showed Adam my Austin Animal Shelter app. And this is my homepage. This is where we have like basically the lowdown of everything important. So 49 animals are left at the center each day. They spend on an average almost 17 days in the shelter and only 42% of them get adopted. You can see the rest of the outcomes right here. You can see the animals they receive, which is almost 60% dogs. So over half of them are dogs and pretty much the rest are cats at the end. We can also see what age the animals are re re retrieved and how long they spend in the shelter. And then of course I give you a little information about the animal shelter and this is of course made with, with Plotly. So that is the homepage. But if you remember, we wanted to talk about also how long the different animals spend in the shelter. So if we go up here, we can switch to different pages and go to the time in shelter page. This graph does take a little bit to load because it is quite a bit of data. But what this graph is, is basically strip plots and violin plots, which we don't have time to go into today, but basically allows you to see you know, the different key points. So for instance, if you hover over the violin plot over here, it'll show you that the median dog spends five days in the shelter. The minimum is zero and the upper max is 1,600 days in the shelter, which is a lot. This, this means that dogs spend on average about five days. Cats spend on average 5.8 days. The other animals spend on average 0.35 days, so much lower. And birds only spend, let's see, 3.9 days. I think I read this one wrong. Let's just double check. No, I read that right. Okay. So others get out of there pretty quickly. Um, but it lets you see different animal types. You can also maybe look at, oh, okay, let's look at the, you know, gender, the sex. You know, maybe girl cats get out there faster than boy cats or something like that. And what that allows you to do is it'll remake this graph. Once again, it takes a little bit. But you can check out the neutered males. The median time spent in the shelter is 4.85 days. And the spade is 4.9, the intact male is 5.9, and the intact female is 5.4. So at least the means are higher for, for those that are intact and not spayed and neutered. So there's a couple different categories. I won't, let you, I won't go through all of them right now, but you can go ahead and go to this website and check out and play around with this. I also made this calendar page, which lets you see when the intakes happen. So in the summer, there's actually a lot of intakes. This is what I found. In July, there is a ton of intakes each year, which basically means people are dropping off the animals that they either find or the pets that they couldn't handle or something like that in this summer. And in the winter, there's not necessarily as much as that. Now we can go ahead and turn this toggle and we see that a lot of pets are adopted in July. That was July, that was July, that was July or August, I guess, July right here. So there's something happening in that, those summer months where maybe there's a campaign or, or maybe there's some sort of like deadline where they're like, there's different transfers happening. I'm not entirely sure. This would be interesting to present to the, the, you know, the organizers and the employees of this place to try to understand, does this make sense? Does this data go along with what you guys do? And we can also do this for, instead of doing it for like the whole entire timeline, we can turn this toggle right here and we have the day of the week and the hour of the day and we have this heat map so we can see a lot of drop-offs or sorry a lot of pickups happen at 15 hours so that's basically 5 p.m um, a lot of pickups are happening and that's that's what this yellow signifies in the middle of the night there's not nearly as many and we can change this back to the income so this is people dropping off their pets we see there's actually a lot at 11 so that's probably when the shelter opens so people drop off their pets you know at 11 and people end up picking up their pets at 5 p.m so maybe there's some sort of management maybe we have more people working in the morning versus the afternoon there's something that we can decide in terms of shelter in here and i, I hope this is useful for the shelter and for you know you guys to get an idea of what the shelter can do here's adam's thoughts on this app no i really like this this is I like how you divide it into separate pages because you don't want to put so many graphs on one page. It doesn't make sense. It's too much. You don't want the user to keep on scrolling and scrolling. So good use of pages. And this is very, very useful information. Again, if I was if I was managing or an employee at the, at the, at the, at the shelter, this would really help me understand, like you said, when to staff, when to have fewer staff, uh, when do I need more, more room for the cats and dogs that are coming in. Holidays in the winter, obviously there's fewer coming in, so maybe they can dedicate more uh, more staff to cleaning or whatever. This I can see how can, this could be helpful to other shelters around the country. So Adam did really like it, but I don't think it's perfect. There's a lot of things that I could have done better that I would have done if I had more time 
and I want you guys to be able to do those things. So there is a link in the description down below that will sign you up to get all of the resources for this project and for the future projects as well. So make sure you go ahead and click on that list and I'll give you a little example of what I would do differently if I was you and I could just fork what I've done and edit it and create it a little bit differently. So basically what I would change about this is I would try to make it more outcome dependent. So for example, like we saw that this dog right here was, it looks like it was about, I don't know, seven years old when it was adopted and it spent 1,600 days in the shelter. And I think if you do the math, that's about three, four, five years in the shelter. So it was adopted or died after 12 years. Did it get adopted after five years in the shelter? That is crazy. So I'd like to maybe put that in the like the hover over here or just try to understand that a little bit more. The other thing I'd probably do is something similar on the uh, time in the shelter over here is I would try to make these outcomes also based off of what actually happened. Because you know if someone was in the shelter this many days and then died, that makes sense. But if they were adopted, that is crazy, maybe. I don't know, maybe that's not crazy, I don't know. But like, I would try to understand this a little bit more and try to make it a little bit more focused on the outcome. Another thing that I could do is you could make a machine learning algorithm that would try to predict you know, how long an animal might stay in the shelter. Like for instance, it'd be really cool to have a random forest or decision tree showing like what parts of the animal, like whether it's a cat or a dog, how old they are, what color they are, what breed they are, all that good stuff, how long they might stay in the animal shelter. That would be a really cool machine learning application that any of you guys could try out. I'll also put more like opportunities and things that you could take this further inside of the resources section. So make sure you click that link down below. Make sure that you click that you're subscribed to the channel so you see future videos. You can click this playlist to watch the former videos in part of this challenge. And guys, I'm exhausted. That took me like eight hours to just build, not even including the YouTube video. So I cannot believe that I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and do this again. Wish me good luck, see you guys tomorrow.